Welcome to the Sayings of Jesus. In today's message, Love Your Enemies, Dr. McLuhan teaches that loving enemies frees God to do extraordinary things that help the most unlikely people become followers of Jesus. Today, we'll consider one of the most radical sayings of Jesus. In the face of abuse and hatred, Jesus said, I say to you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who abuse you. Luke chapter 6, verse 27 and 28. Jesus practiced exactly what he preached. Jesus loved his enemies. And when he was abused, he did not curse. And while being crucified, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they are doing. Luke chapter 23 and verse 34. In my travels around the world, I've met plenty of people who've taken these words of Jesus to heart and loved their enemies. One time I was traveling to meet with a group of refugees from Iran in the country of Italy. From Rome, we drove up into the Apennines, Apennines uh, mountain range, uh, and on the other side was a secluded campground. And there we met with these precious followers of Jesus. And while there, I met a man who seemed really desperate to talk to me. The conference schedules can get really busy, and it wasn't until the last day that we had an opportunity to have a private meeting. He used to work for the regime as a prison guard. And he said to me, my goal in life, listen to me carefully, was to hurt as many people as possible and kill an American. And there I was sitting in his presence. <laughs> but he was a follower of Jesus. He encountered the love of Jesus. He said, I've been forgiven for the terrible things that I did to prisoners, but there's one thing that I've been unable to forgive myself for doing. I beat a pastor terribly, and I can't forgive myself for what I did to him. So I asked him if he would allow me to take him back to those circumstances and to that room where all of that occurred and ask him, to, to see if Jesus would show him something that he didn't know about what was going on in that day. Now, you can imagine he was reluctant to take a journey like that with me. But because of the teaching that I had given that week, he was willing to try. Of course, it was easy for him to remember everything about the room, the circumstances, the clothing. He could picture it all in my mind and tell me, in his mind and tell me all about it. And then I asked him to look around the room and say, can you see Jesus? And he saw Jesus in the room. Jesus was present. Remember, at that moment, he was not a follower of Jesus. And I said to him, just tell me, what is Jesus doing? And with tears in his eyes, he said, I was about to strike that pastor as hard as I could. And Jesus grabbed my arm and prevented me from hitting him. He said, I knew that blow would have killed the man, but Jesus prevented me from killing him. And in that moment, he realized how much Jesus loved him and how much Jesus loved the pastor. And Jesus set him free through that encounter. He was able to forgive himself for what he had done. Loving enemies frees God to do extraordinary things. Now, you know I've been traveling for more than 20 years. One time I was scheduled to visit a man who lived in Mauritania. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, the communication went dry, just stopped. I didn't know. And I learned that he had been martyred for his faith. Now, I had the privilege of attending the memorial service for this man. And during that time, the family said publicly that they forgave the man for killing their son and expressed to him how much God loved him. I wish I could tell you that was the only time I needed to attend a service like that, 
but sadly it is not. Another friend was martyred in Libya. During the memorial service, his wife forgave those who killed her husband and prayed for them to discover the powerful love of Jesus. These experiences and others have strengthened my faith to believe that Jesus meant it when he said, love your enemies. The more we learn to love our enemies, the easier it is to love our friends. I heard a pastor say one time a man tried to tell him that he no longer loved his wife. The pastor said, well, the Bible says love your enemies. (laughs) And that just took the steam out of that thing right away. (laughs) Made me think a whole lot more (laughs) about life. I'm sure the man didn't like what the pastor said. It certainly got his attention. And just him saying it that way got my attention. So whatever relationships, whatever challenges you are facing in in relationships, these words of Jesus are relevant. Jesus loves your enemies, and he wants to help you to love them as well. Your enemy might be your boss, your fellow worker, your neighbor, a relative, people with different political views. God help us as we go through another round of commercials. Whatever it is, Jesus loves the person enough to have died for him, for her, for whatever their behaviors are. Ask Jesus to help you to love your neighbor. Now, the more we learn about uh, our enemies or the more we learn to love our enemies, the easier it is to love our friends. I began this message by suggesting that this is the most radical saying of Jesus. In this series of messages, we have been considering the sayings of Jesus compared to the sayings of other great religious leaders. Mahatma Gandhi was well known for his radical, nonviolent protests against the British in India. But his ideas were not his own. He had studied the writings of Jesus carefully, and he had read these words of Jesus, love your enemy, and he said that is the right and high ideal to follow. And so he put that into practice in his own life. But since then, many radical Hindus are killing many people, followers of Jesus, happening right now. Radical Buddhists are doing exactly the same thing. And it's not my purpose to try to shame any other religious leader. But on this particular point, the difference between the sayings of Jesus and the sayings of Muhammad could not be clearer. Jesus said, the one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And the one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Luke chapter 6 and verse 29. The Quran says, in Kao, which is the second surah, and ayat 194, he who attacks you, attack him in like manner. Many other verses like that in the Quran. And many people who were raised reading the the Quran find themselves incredibly attracted to the sayings of Jesus and in particular, this invitation to love our enemies. Now, what could be more powerful than learning to love one's enemies? Jesus continued this teaching by saying, if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles or a second mile, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 41. Have you ever wondered what that was all about in the days of Jesus? The Jewish people viewed their Roman invaders as their enemies. And one thing that they particularly hated about Roman soldiers passing by them, they were carrying heavy loads on their carts. They were authorized to force the citizens to push their cart one mile. Remember, there are Roman mile markers all down these main roads. And so they had to push that cart, uh, regardless of what they were doing, uh, for at least one mile. And so Jesus says, in the light of that, now that you know, if anyone forces you to go one mile, go two miles, Matthew chapter 4, chapter 5, verse 41. I think we've got a lot of second milers here at Ingleside willing to go the extra mile 
for whatever God asks you to do, whatever your neighbors need you to do, whatever your friends and family need, you're willing to go that extra mile. It's become a proverb in our society today. May God help you. Jesus said we are to pray for our enemies. I think it's important to understand the kind of prayer that Jesus wanted us to pray. We're not praying for God to kill him. We're not God praying for God to make him do what we want him to do. <laughs> We're praying and asking God to bless them. That's what Jesus said. Pray for your enemies and bless them. So one of our HSP graduates ministers in an area uh, where he's teaching locals to give food to radical Muslims. A lot of drought in that area. And for some of these most unlikely people living in these remote islands are experiencing the love of God for the first time from someone who they consider to be an enemy. And the more we learn to love our enemies, the easier it is to love our friends. Uh, Jesus, speaking about other relationships, said, Give to everyone who begs from you, and everyone who takes away your goods. Do not demand them back. As you wish others to do to you, you do to them. Luke chapter 6, verse 30 and 31. What is this called? And we know this as the golden rule. So the second half of this verse is where we want to just take a few moments. The New International Version translate this verse is particularly clear, it says it this way, do to others as you would have them do to you. Again, the same verse, just in a slightly different translation. And of course we want people to be kind and loving and gentle to us. And Jesus is simply saying, if you'll sow that into people's lives, you will reap it in return from others. Jesus went on to say, if you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those to whom do, who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. Luke chapter 6, verse 32 and 33. Does that make sense to you? Now, in our own time, we're so grateful for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who modeled the teaching of Jesus on loving our enemies. What a great example he is to us of nonviolence and teaching us what Jesus put into practice and wanted all of us to live that kind of way. Jesus continues by saying, if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. Luke chapter 6 and verse 34. And Jesus ends this teaching with a powerful saying, love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and to the evil. Luke chapter 6 and verse 35. It is the last part of this verse that I think is particularly important. God is kind to the ungrateful and the evil, Luke chapter 6 and verse 35. It is good to follow a God who is kind to ungrateful and to evil persons. If God is kind to them, how much kinder will he be towards those who love him and to those who want to do his will? Let's take a moment and thank God for his love for us and for his mercy towards all people, he is a compassionate God. Ask God to bring to your attention someone whom you may have thought of as an enemy. And before you leave today, I invite you to pray and ask God for the one who he's brought to your attention and speak a blessing over their life in a way, in a deeper way than perhaps you ever have before. And perhaps someone is listening to this message, thinks that you are doing God a favor by killing followers of Jesus. Jesus even said that, a time will come when you think you're doing God's will to kill people. I open your heart to receive today's powerful teaching. Jesus loved his enemies so that we can learn from him how to love our enemies. Now, receive the opportunity to be forgiven. 
that Jesus offered to his enemies when he was crucified on the cross. Accept that Jesus died for you in your place, that you can spend eternity with God in heaven. He died for you so that you can be in his presence, in the very presence of God, the one who has always longed to have a relationship with you. Thank Jesus for dying for you on the cross and ask him to forgive you for all of your sins that you have committed. If you just receive Jesus as your savior, write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Next week, we'll continue learning from the sayings of Jesus. Father, fill us with your spirit of love and power. Help us draw on that love in times when we are feeling oppressed and mistreated. Give us courage to obey your command to love our enemies. In the name of Jesus, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.